How soon can we expect SpaceX Starship to refuel in space and head for lunar landings? And what are the next major milestones on the horizon for Starship flights? Could we see landing legs on a newer version of Starship in the near future? Now, on October 13th, SpaceX successfully captured a super heavy booster with the aid of two enormous mechanical arms at the Starbase facility in Texas. In time, SpaceX hopes Starship launches will occur frequently and at low cost, enabling the kind of missions we've only dreamed about, returning to the moon and one day colonizing Mars. And the recent super heavy booster catch validated a key part of this approach, showing that SpaceX can land a booster without cumbersome landing legs, reducing turnaround time and also mass. This streamlined process is essential for Elon Musk's larger plan of reusable rockets capable of supporting lunar and Martian missions. Now, SpaceX's immediate focus is achieving an in-flight relight of the Raptor engines on Starship, the upper stage of their two-stage system. Despite five test flights, the second stage has not yet achieved a full orbital trajectory. And on each flight, the Starship upper stage was lost before completing an orbit. The next phase involves testing an in-space relight for a controlled deorbit burn which could occur on SpaceX's sixth test flight, IFT-6, possibly as soon as late 2024 or early 2025. And achieving this relight would not only enable SpaceX to move forward with full orbital missions, but also set the stage for deploying larger Starlink satellites. Now, SpaceX is inching closer to its first relight test by preparing both the Starship upper stage, Ship 31, and the Super Heavy Booster, Booster 13, for their respective launches. With regulatory approvals in place, we could see the next flight in November, testing crucial systems for future orbital missions. Now, success here would allow SpaceX to start putting larger Starlink satellites into orbit, and these next-gen satellites will offer a new level of direct-to-cell phone internet coverage, further supporting SpaceX's broader connectivity goals. Now, once SpaceX has proved it can land Starship reliably in targeted ocean zones, the next major step will be attempting to bring Starship down safely on land. And currently, the primary landing site for Super Heavy Boosters is in South Texas, where the capture technique was first demonstrated at Starbase. However, to catch a full Starship on land, SpaceX faces regulatory and logistical challenges since Starship reentry requires a decent path that passes over Mexico and Southern Texas. Now, to address this, the company may first attempt to launch Starship in less populated areas, such as Australia or possibly the remote Johnston Atoll in the Pacific Ocean. And landing on land would require Starship to be equipped with landing legs, something Elon Musk has suggested might not happen right away. SpaceX has two pathways, tackle regulatory challenges for landing legs in Texas or add landing legs for an off-site landing elsewhere. Either option carries implications for the lunar and Martian versions of Starship as future Starships intended for the moon and Mars will eventually need legs for the respective surface landings. In late 2025, NASA anticipates a critical milestone for Starship, the Human Landing System, HLS Propellant Transfer Test. Now, this demonstration is a key element in NASA's Artemis program to return astronauts to the moon. And for this, SpaceX plans to send two Starships into orbit, one to act as the propellant chaser and the other as the target. And once docked in space, the chaser will transfer fuel to the target vehicle in a maneuver that has never been tried before. Also, after looking through analytics, I've noticed that 70% of you are new to the channel and not subscribed yet. So please take a second, smash the subscribe button to join our growing community. Now, NASA is eyeing 2026 as the year for its first crewed lunar landing, but many expect delays given the technical complexity of fueling, docking, and transferring cryogenic propellant in space. SpaceX is already working on the required docking hardware, quick disconnect systems, and hot gas thrusters for this demonstration. However, a second launch tower in South Texas may also be necessary to achieve this complex mission. Musk's team is pushing forward on these preparations with the goal of conducting a first attempt by late 2025. 
Now, following the propellant transfer test, SpaceX's next big challenge is to demonstrate full reusability by reflying a super heavy booster by early 2026. Although SpaceX has now successfully recovered a booster, they haven't yet relaunched one. And Musk has hinted that a fully reusable Starship and booster stack by 2025 would be the critical breakthrough for making multiplanetary travel achievable. If the booster relay goes smoothly, the reusability factor could rapidly speed up SpaceX's development timeline. Now, SpaceX's previous timeline with the Falcon 9 rocket offers clues to what might come. And in that case, SpaceX took about 15 months from its first successful landing to the first successful relight. Now, the super heavy booster is a far larger and more complex vehicle, so SpaceX may take additional time for testing. Reflying a booster would validate this approach and offer valuable insights into the wear and tear of these colossal rockets. Musk's goal is for Starship to eventually operate without any reflight or refit or repair between launches. Now, alongside booster reusability, SpaceX is scaling its ground infrastructure, aiming to construct launch towers not only in Texas, but also in Florida. Musk has stated that these two towers in each location will create the baseline launch frequency needed for high cadence Starship operations. However, the sheer volume of liquid oxygen the Starship requires, upwards of 3,400 metric tons per booster launch, poses logistical hurdles. Each launch would consume nearly a full day's worth of U.S. liquid oxygen production, underscoring the need for increased oxygen production capabilities to support SpaceX's frequent launch ambitions. Now, another major test on NASA's Starship timeline is a long-duration flight test, targeted for about late 2026. This test aims to show Starship's capacity to linger in lunar orbit for an extended period of time, a requirement for Artemis missions where NASA's Orion spacecraft will rendezvous with Starship for lunar landings. This test will assess Starship's ability to operate autonomously and preserve its propellant supplies for up to 100 days. Now, the outcome will inform NASA's final decision for the lunar version of Starship. Now, if SpaceX's Starship performs well in its long-duration test, NASA and SpaceX will proceed with an uncrewed lunar landing demonstration, tentatively set for 2027. This mission will test Starship's lunar descent and ascent capabilities. On the moon, Starship faces unique challenges. It must land on a surface that is within 1.5 degrees of being level to prevent toppling. SpaceX will use this uncrewed mission to deliver lunar cargo and test the astronauts' elevator system, which is a vertical lift that will safely transport astronauts from the Starship's main hatch all the way down to the lunar surface. And after its lunar stay, Starship will attempt to launch off the moon autonomously using only its stored fuel. This task is especially difficult because unlike the Apollo lunar module, Starship will not have ground support to assist with launch preparations. This capability is essential for the Starship redesign to function as a suitable lunar vehicle. Now, if this test is successful, SpaceX will have if this test is successful, SpaceX will have demonstrated Starship's viability as a reusable lander for NASA's Artemis missions. And should everything go according to plan, a crewed lunar mission could follow as early as September of 2028. This would mark the return of astronauts to the moon for the first time since Apollo. Now, although this timeline is two years behind NASA's initial target of 2026, it reflects the immense effort required to establish a sustainable lunar exploration program. Both NASA and SpaceX agree that for a long-term lunar program to succeed, reusability must be built into each stage of the mission architecture. And unlike Apollo's lunar lander, which was used just once, Starship is being developed to support ongoing lunar missions. Apollo's limitations, including the high costs and low payload capacity, curtailed the program. Starship, on the other hand, can deliver around 200 tons of payload per flight, making it more capable of supporting complex lunar operations. And this difference could be game-changing for a continuous human presence on the moon. Now, Starship's ultimate potential hinges on achieving a consistent, 
reusable launch cadence, and scalable refueling infrastructure, essential for humanity's next chapter in space exploration. I want to say thank you for watching today. I appreciate your time and I appreciate you spending it here with me. So if you could take a second and hit the subscribe button with maximum dynamic pressure, that would be great. Also give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below about when you think SpaceX will actually get to the lunar surface. When do you think that's going to happen? Hopefully 2028 would be great. 2030 would be great too. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Take care of yourselves and each other. I'll see you in the next one.